Now we're going to, so I thought, well, what, what is probably the most asked question in this class, Greg? Do you, what would you say? When people say, what are they having the hardest time with and what are they most keyboard. frustrated about? Huh? Keyboard. <laughs> the keyboard? <laughs> I was going to say registrations. Yeah. In other words, what, yes. what goes with this? That's probably, the, over the years, the biggest question I get when people call or come in on a private one-on-one -on -one is, this is the song, what do you think would sound pretty with it? Now, you've got lots of options, right? Yeah. So, will you write on the board? There's two, there's, and I think this is probably a really important class to do right now because how to practice and how to approach a song. One of my students yesterday in the beginner class that I teach at Sun City, she goes, I've been playing two weeks and I'm so frustrated. I should be better than this than I am. Oh my God. Now, mind you, they're playing two hands and chords in, in two weeks. So I reassured her that in two weeks they're doing a lot. It's not easy. and and. So it occurred to me to, to, well, this week, here's what happened. I'm, I'm going to, now that I'm going to be semi-retired, I'm going to start teaching more private students at my house. So I have, right, you know, last week I got six new ones. Whoa. So they're all starting, and, and then I have a couple of students that um, moved here from out of town, and they're really good. So, and their piano, and I'm not a piano, I don't play the piano like the organ. So I decided I better get with it because if I have to practice to teach my student, that's really not cool because as soon as the student said, would you play this for me? And the teacher can't play it, you know you need a new teacher. Okay, or I'm, as a teacher, I need to give them to someone who can. Okay, so this student is playing Chopin. Now, I haven't played the piano like that in a really long time. So I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to do this and be reputable and keep my, my pride with this student, then I better, I better start practicing too. So, and to be honest with you, when, when you work here and with all the things that we do, I don't practice very much anymore. So I, every night now, I sit down at the piano when I get home, and I practice. And I found out that practicing Chopin is just as frustrating as practicing when the saints go marching in. It's the same process, it's the same frustration, and it's the same amount of work to try to get your fingers and your brain and everything to go together. All right? So... What you have to decide, especially if you're playing on an electronic instrument, is you have two choices as to how you approach the instrument. Number one, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I left you stand in there, didn't I? Number one, pick the song, find the sound. Okay, that's your first kind of the way your brain is going to think. Pick a song, find the sound. And sound means rhythms and whatever instruments, okay? All right. Number two is find the sound, pick the song. Say that again. Find the song. You, you, you've got a book and you open it up and you go, I feel like playing this. And then, you're, then your brain clicks on, oh, what should I put to go with the song? Now, if you're a piano player, this does not apply, right? Piano always sounds like a piano. So you just read the notes and you play. <coughs> but on a keyboard, a clavinova, uh, an organ, you have a lot more to think about. All right, now think, think for a minute. I want you to tell me which one you usually do most. Number one, or number two? One. How many of you usually pick a song and then find the sound? How many of you find the sound and then pick the song? Nobody. 
Okay? I want you to change that. Okay? Now that you have a whole table full of music that you can pick from, you have books, you have fake books, you have whatever you have. Number two is what you should be doing. You should be finding a sound. It's, it's like if, if, if your biggest problem is registrations, you should be concentrating on those because you already know how to play the dumb songs, most of them. It doesn't take very long, does it? Especially with that stack of music you just got just to play the chords and the melody. This, and even the little hundred dollar keyboards now, are amazing what they, what they will do. And I, I'll tell you, people that I teach that have keyboards, they still play them like a piano. They turn them on, they sound like a piano, and that's what they do. They don't have a clue all the things that those things will do. So in one of these days, I'm going to get ambitious and make a video on how to use a keyboard. But the sounds and the rhythms, that's, that's the whole reason that I chose to play the organ. Okay? That's the reason that they would, I don't have any pianos in this place, because people come in and go, I'd like to look at a piano, and I went, why? <laughs> why would you buy a piano if you're a beginner and you're an adult when you can play on a clavinova, a digital piano, with rhythms and 600 instruments and all the fun things that they do? Why would you pick a plain old piano? Now, some people are just purists. That's all they want. They want to play Chopin. Well, they don't know. It's going to take years before that happens. Or it takes a month before it happens on an organ or a keyboard or a digital piano. Okay. So Greg's going to sit down at the organ. And I'm going to show you how to do find the sound, pick the songs. Okay. Because if you kind of change your mindset now, when you, when you sit down at the instrument, number one is easy. You can pick a song. You can push one touch, and the instrument will pick the sound for you. Okay? And sometimes you like them, sometimes you don't. It's a bigger challenge when, you are, when you're playing around to find the sounds first, and then find the song. Okay? And you have enough music now in that stack right there to find a song. And they're categorized, right? So, love and romance, you're not going to pick Latin, probably, most of it. Um, patriotic, you're not going to pick uh, bluegrass. So, you know, some of the genres just work. Okay, Greg, trade places with me. Okay. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is start with the rhythm section. <coughs> All right? Now, when you start with the rhythm section, all you have to do is pick one. Now, our TV isn't hooked up to this organ, but it, let's just pick, um, you pick, you know what a genre is, right? What's a genre? Category. It's a category of music. So name some rhythm styles. Country. Waltz. Country. Come on. Big band. Big band. Latin. Latin. Gospel. Gospel. New hour. Ballad. Swing. Anyway, they're all listed right here, right? Yep. Now, just but there's only ten buttons there. Does that mean there was only ten rhythms? On a keyboard, it may say country, but it'll say 0, 0, 001 or zero, zero, 0010 or zero, 010 to zero, 020. That means there's 10 other ones in between those two numbers. So most keyboards, organs, digital pianos have 300, 400, 500 yeah. different rhythms and sounds. How many of you listen to on yours? All of them. To a lot of all of them? <laughs> Anybody listen to all of them? No. You know some? I haven't even I listened to all of it, have you? You probably have. Yeah, I've logged it. You logged them? Yeah. Awesome. Well, okay. That's good. So let's, Greg, but you... But overall, most people don't 
sit down and do one at a time to see what it is that they've got. Oh, no, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's not something that I would, I would say, I would, I would probably say, oh, this is a country song. Go through all of your country rhythm options and pick or select something you think would fit with that song. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that's your assignment. Go through every rhythm yeah, because there's too many variations with an organ and, and keyboards nowadays that you can, you know, uh, you have options that you didn't have 20 years ago. Technology. You know. mm -hmm. Comment on Oh, I don't know. Cool. <laughs> and you know what? This is probably the best grown up toy that you can have. Okay, so pick pick a rhythm pick a rhythm that you would like to use. Okay. Let's try Music Exchange. Traditional yes. and show tune. Fine. Show time is what it's called on this one. But uh, and then I've got some choices uh -huh. in this. One is a stage waltz. I'm just gonna buy some time while she's on the phone. Um, I think I just missed. Foxtrot two, polka. I just got it. Raindrops, oh, Dixie. Yeah, Larry. Went to I uh, Maryland. Anna Boogie, Screen I One. It today. I think Screen One is the one I used for Gun of the Wind. Uh, IOL Ma Maryland, M A, Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. That, so it went out this morning. Is it? All right. Thank I you. Think so. <laughs> Very dramatic intro. So we were just going over a couple of these rhythms under traditional showtime. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you picked a rhythm, right? Isn't cute. I, I picked a rhythm. Yeah. Pick a rhythm. Hit the accompaniment button on the keyboard. So you make sure you split your keyboard. Hit the intro button and listen. Now you don't even have a song on your music rack right now. I know it's a 4-4. Four four. Yeah, it, it, if it isn't a waltz, it's 4-4, four four, right? Okay. If it isn't, it never mind. Okay, turn the volume up. All right, now there's no bass playing right now, right? So it's just a little harp. Now, you can study this, right? Do you study the rhythms? Slow it down. Remember the class we did on weeding out the garbage? All right, now. Think of a song. When you wish upon a star. When you wish upon a star. Come on. Sound of music. Sound of music. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. I hear Oh Holy Night. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> <coughs> I hear Amazing Grace too for some reason. Mm -hmm. That's six eight time, but by the way. It could be one, two, three, four, or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So that's pretty versatile. It is. Okay. All right. So that's variation what? That's actually variation four or full. Okay. You want one? Yep. Oh boy. How come there's no bass? Well, that's some kid hitting a can. Boy, that's a toe tapper. <laughs> up on a rhythm, always play a chord progression. 
Okay, so play C chord and F chord and C and G. See, because the chords affect the background sounds when you play them. So always just kind of try and just sit and play just C, F, and C, and G and kind of see how they sound. Okay, stop. Then hit the ending button. Now, that ending, if you're playing Amazing Grace, you don't want that ending. No. So sometimes the endings work with the song you're playing and sometimes they don't. So you, you, you just got to listen to them and make a plan. But you know what? You can literally spend all day finding songs to go with one rhythm. Okay, pick another one. Um, okay, let's see what we have. Music Hall, Bubbles, Charleston, Dixieland, Ragtime, Ragtime. Okay, one touch. Play. Is you got to slow it down. Are you gonna, now, can you, hit, can you think of a song? I hear Alley Cat. <laughs> I hear, put another nickel in the Put another in, nickel in the Nickelodeon. Five foot two. Five foot two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Variation two. Not much happened there, did it? Variate now. One and two are connected to each other. They're the simple versions of the rhythm. Three and four are more complicated. So listen to three and four. Yeah. All right. Now play five. music if you can play by ear this process is a lot more fun a lot more fun so my book on playing by ear which most of you have get it out start looking through it because that will help you a lot to be able to just sit down and not have to pick through books to find do you all have a fake book a what? fake book yeah. fake books are the big fat books that have lots of choices in them with a big table of contents and just easy play one line melodies. Well, now you got all those songs, yeah, so that'll yeah. that'll help. Okay, stop. All right. So do you, do you see what I'm talking about about picking the sound? All right. Now let's let's have a test. Greg's gonna play a rhythm, and I want you to tell me what genre it is. Okay. Just listen to it, and see if you can tell me where where that rhythm fits. What genre it's in. show tune too yeah because of the intro kind of kind of led you that way mm -hmm. and this is an s this is an older organ so it has rhythms on that none of us are used to hearing anymore so that uh that was a nice one i love the s it's a great organ so that that rhythm's not on the 900 it's called parade yeah
Yeah, that, I like it for showtime too. Yeah. All right, now let's have another kind of test. Remember we talked about the instruments in an orchestra? Let's say you don't want to play any rhythms and you just want to play a song. Like Beautiful Dreamer. Okay? Just easy song, big notes, easy play, not a lot of chords. But you want to make it beautiful. Now, I am an advocate of simple is sometimes the most beautiful. You don't have to be fancy, showy, play a bunch of notes to win a competition. Right, Richard? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, Richard played a single note l l melody with chords, Lord's Prayer, at the Roland competition, and he won because of his registration and what he, the sounds that he picked. And he played from here, from his heart, instead of his head. Right? Mm -hmm. And he had people just going, oh, that was awesome. All right? So think of this. When you're a beginner, sometimes when you play it so simple and beautiful and you have, you nail the registration, that's why Greg is a master of playing. He's really good. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's our last class. I mean, I got to butter you up. <laughs> Or, or well, probably cry. <laughs> yes, some confetti. Yeah. <laughs> Greg has the, he has studied this instrument until, I mean, he spends hours and hours and hours dissecting the sounds and changing the rhythms and giving some sounds more sustain and more reverb. And we talked about this at the 900 Club last week, how, how every little detail that he does makes the instrument perform to make him sound amazing. See, the secret is really not that good. No, I'm kidding. Okay, but you don't have to be very good if you know the instrument. Get it? If you don't, you're gonna sound like crap if you're the best musician in the world. I have heard people that are amazing musicians sit down at an organ that they don't know anything about and just sound terrible. Okay, so here's the key. Greg's going to pick an instrument. I want you to tell me what it is. What the instrument is? Yep. Okay, what is it? Louder. <laughs> 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 because they can only blow one note, right? So if you're a beginner, those are the instruments you want to use. All right, so try this one. Tell me what it is. Violin. 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 What happens when you make a violin bigger? Cello. cello. It's a cello, and just move it down an octave. And a bass. And a bass. Now, um, there's a viola, and then if you move it up an octave, it becomes a violin, concert violin here. So you, you literally don't have to find those three instruments. You can just put on a violin and move it up and down. Flute. <laughs> flute. It's a flute. What is a person that plays a flute called? Flautist. A flautist. Flautist. Uh -huh. yeah. What's a person who plays an oboe called? An oboist. An oboe player. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those guys. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What is an accordion player called? Accordionist. Accordionist? A squeeze box. <laughs> a person who plays the accordion. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, trumpet. Trumpet. Muted, yeah, very good. These yeah. guys are good. Okay. They're very good. I think they got it. Now, the key, let's put on an oboe. Okay. Okay? And take off the reverb. What is reverb? 
In the old days, we picked a sound on the upper manual and we put a contrasting sound on the lower manual. And this is a really good point. If you're playing a solo instrument on the top that's a reed, you do not want reed instruments on the bottom. You want a contrast. Oh, no. So I, I, if I'm playing an oboe on the top, I might have the strings accompany the, on the bottom. If I'm playing an organ on the top, I won't have organ on the bottom. So you, you always kind of want to have a contrast. So put strings on the bottom and an oboe on the top with no reverb. Now, again in the old days, and boy, I'll tell you, I never thought I'd say that in the old days. Before the organs had everything kind of built in and already preset, we had to decide after we picked the instrument that we wanted to use, where we wanted the instrument to be. It, it was called stretch and bend, okay? Stretch means echo. Do you want it in a big room? Do you want it outside in a hay field? Do you want to play a concert or do you want to be in a barn? Okay, that totally affects how the instrument sounds, all right? Bend means wiggle or, or tremolo. Do you want it to wiggle? Or do you want it to go like a Leslie around and around and around to give it animated sound? So after you, on the, on the new organs and keyboards, you generally don't have to think like that anymore. They already decided what sounds best with it. But you, you're gonna get to a point where maybe you wanna tweak it a little bit. So listen if Greg plays a oboe solo, just a, a pretty sound and no reverb. Okay, that oboe player is standing outside. There's no echo, there's no nothing. We want this oboe player to be in Carnegie Hall. Mm. Acoustics are right, everything is good. So reverb is what you want to use. And the, the new instruments now have, you can tell it, do you want it in a room with brick walls, with wooden walls, do you want carpet, do you want drapes? And you literally can go in and just totally move that thing around and never have it leave your house. <laughs> Okay, so put some reverb on, lots of it. Now listen if Greg plays a song with both hands and pedals in. Just, oh, okay? Oh, do it all, Greg. Do it all. Hear the difference? Okay. Now, you also notice that he put lots of little embellishments and breaks and see all those little things? He just can't help it. It's <laughs> okay, for example, the other day I was watching a cooking show and I really like to cook. I like to eat too, you Did can you tell. Did you hear about Paula Deen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know what? Half the people on this earth have what she does and don't get crucified like they're doing to her. Why did the media blow up? I know. Yeah. So she has a blood sugar problem. It's not, you know, well, she, she does cook pretty fattening food, though. Yeah. Good food. It's good. Good, I know. <laughs> you know what? My grandma was from Denmark. She lived to be 96. Yep. She cooked everything in lard. I mean, yep. lard. <laughs> Pounds of it. She had a bucket of lard in her kitchen. I know. So I think it greased her arteries and made her live longer. I know. <laughs> we had able able skeevers. Have you ever heard of them? Oh yeah. They're in a little pan that have little round like they're like little round donuts like they serve at Denny's. Yeah. But she'd fill that those little good things up each all the way to the top with lard and then put the dough in. Oh my and then when and then he turned the dough over to make them round. Little ball pan. That little ball was just one big lard ball. And, oh my god, it was, so, oh, it was so good. You dip it. In, then you dip it in sugar. Yeah, <laughs> sugar <laughs> there. Anyway, how do we get on that subject? Uh, oh yeah. Food. So the other day I was <laughs> watching the Food Channel, and they were talking about making gar uh, little garnet. You know how you take the, the herbs and you wrap them up in a string and you throw them all in the pot? Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's kind of like setting up the registration. Mm -hmm. It's that little detail. One little detail. So I, 
I have this recipe that I always made, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try that. I'm just gonna, I went out in my little herb garden, picked some stuff that I didn't know what to do with, and I wrapped them all up, and I didn't even know what was in there, and threw it in the pot. And that night, my husband goes, wow, what did you do to this? It tastes really good. See, I just did one little tweak, and it made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your music. You have to think about details. And I'm at the point now where I, you can either think broadly about, I want to play 10 songs today, or you can pick one. Right now, I'm playing Chopin's Vaults. And I'm going to learn it, and, when I, and it's going to be just as hard for me to do that, it is for you to pick a song and play what, at the level you're at. You never will stop practicing, ever. And you're never going to be done, ever. It's like golf, you can't win. <laughs> so you know what? It's the process, and I lectured on this yesterday. It is the ability to sit down and feel like you've accomplished something. Now, in a group, that's hard to do because you don't really have any kind of, um, what do you call it? You don't have to account, uh, account to me. There's no accountability. So you have to make yourself accountable and go, okay, I want to learn this song and I'm going to stick with it until I get it. All right, and then you go on to another. And pretty soon, I cleaned out all this music this week. I have 42 binders of music wow. over the years that I've collected. Every year I take all the songs that I learned that year and I put them in a binder with a disc. And I'll never probably play them ever again, but they're all together. And, and now I look back and I go, wow. I, last Friday, can you shut that off a minute? Let complacent and just sit and just play just because it's there. Or some of you, I know, don't play at all much. And we go through spells, you know, where you walk by that organ and you just don't touch it for months. And I, that would be me. But never you, right? No. What? <laughs> you missed your cue again. Just say yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, turn no, around. I was just thinking about something, and that is... When it comes to registrations, do you play songs as a, as a strong reader of notes? Do you pick a song that you don't even know as a challenge? Gee, I think I'd like to learn this, whatever it is. Or do you pick songs that you know? In other words, this is not for a show or a funeral or a wedding. It's This is just my own time. I want, I want to learn something. I play the same old songs all the time. I need something new. Mm -hmm. Do you, with that in mind, do you, Karen, pick a song that you're not really familiar with, or do you tend to lean toward the stuff that you? I very rarely go through a book and play a song I haven't ha heard. I'm the same way. I might, I might, you know, see a song that looks interesting and just noodle with it for a minute, yeah, and then go, eh. Okay. But you know what I do? Um, I went to see the movie Joyful Noise mm -hmm. with um, Dolly Parton and Queen Latifah. Was it good? It was pretty good. Okay. There was some amazing music, gospel music in that movie and a great message. It was, it was very fun and entertaining. But there's a song in there uh, about loving you to the moon and back, which That's is the one I wrote for my little, I wrote one for my little grandson, but... Dolly Parton, and Chris Christopherson was her husband who passed away, and she sang this song that I've got to find. I have to find it. it the words were, it was about loving him to the moon and back. Mm. And uh, so I'm going to go online. Now we have the ability to go online and find it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's on iTunes somewhere. Um, but I recommend that movie. It was, it was really, it's a great feel-good movie. And uh, you'll really like it. It's a good date night movie. What was it? Joyful Noise. Joyful Noise. Yeah. yeah. Um, very good movie. And Queen Latifah. Dolly Parton needs... She had her face readjusted. Uh, that woman should not have done that. She was really cute and kind of, you know, unique looking. Now she looks really 
That's what happened with Kenny Rogers, too. Yeah, yeah well, no. totally when you see Dolly Parton in this movie, you'll yeah. be shocked. Because yeah. her, she, yeah. Anyway. With all this music you got um, this morning, you might run across one or two you're not familiar with. And because of technology, you can go to the YouTube and find what, listen to what it sounds like. And the other thing is, for a song that you just have a mental block of what sounds or registrations you should use on whatever kind of an instrument you've got, uh, YouTube can help you with those kind of ideas, just to listen to what, you know, and you can pick out the, the genre real easy, whether it's big band or, or polka or waltz, get some ideas. Okay. Are you in a hurry? Can you guys stick around for a few minutes? Okay. I want Greg to play a couple songs for you because we just need to hear him play. Um, and then uh, I, I want you to take a pencil out or if you have a notepad and I want you to write down what you're hearing when he's playing. See if you can guess the rhythm genre that he picked. See if you can write down some of the sounds that he uses. And remember, he uses a lot of combinations but just see if you can pick out some general things that he's doing. If you hear some embellishments, lots of brace notes or, or glissandos or whatever, I want you to be able to analyze a song. Listen to the song and go, what is he doing? All right? <laughs> he asks himself that often. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to put together a, an arrangement? song? It depends uh, on, on, on the arrangement itself, on, on the song itself. It, it, sometimes I've already got sounds in my head that I think would work really well with a particular song. Now what you said this morning, mm -hmm. now this is a, a 90S. This organ is probably eight years old, yeah. seven, seven, Somewhere five there. to seven to mm -hmm. eight years old. He did his first arrangement on Barney Google oh. on this organ. Yeah. This right. morning he's playing it, and he goes, "Wow, Barney has evolved." Yeah, he did. From that, from this organ up to the 900, he changed the style. Oh, yeah. He changed the the things that he put in it. So over the over the years, he has totally evolved from the original Barney Google to the new version. So um, anyway, so go ahead and play, and you guys just make some notes and write down what you're hearing. Okay. And it doesn't matter what the song is, uh, but uh, this one is If You Knew Susie.
can't listen to that and not be happy. No. That's okay. So what'd you hear? Xylophone. Xylophone. Yeah. Symbols. Pizzicato. Symbols. Pizzicato. Trumpet. Bells, yeah. trumpets. A lot of stuff. And a great attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? He played a pretty simple song mm-hmm. and made it sound amazing. Happy. Picked yeah. a great rhythm with all the little doot doot. Did you hear the timing of all the little da 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 da, all the little fills? Yeah. That was all auto mode uh-huh. doing Is that. that. What you call he gets into his he music. He gets into his music. <laughs> now. Okay, I want you to play that song and not move. What? <laughs> no. No, 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 we're just going to have a little experiment. That's part of the show. No, I don't want you to play a pizzicato. I want you to totally okay. flatten out your attitude and be a total bore. <laughs> okay? Playing the same listen, song? playing the same song. Now listen to, don't move. None of this. It's frozen in time. He can't do it. Like he won't be able to do it. Yeah. You're asking me impossible. No, yeah. I'm not. Go ahead. Hit, 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 skip the intro. Oh, skip the intro. mariachi trumpet that he uses for big band Juiced up, man. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, you gotta end with Barney Google. Well, it's not. It's not the good version. It's not the good version. It's it's one of the uh, older ones. We don't have a bad version. Just don't understand. You know what makes Greg fun to listen to? He 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 keeps this. It, he what's a good? He isn't so flashy that it's not fun to listen to. Have you ever heard people play? That they're just playing so many notes and trying to be so show offy. Oh yeah, all this. Greg is like the best at, at, at just bringing you into that song and making you go, ah. Oh. I mean, he's like his whole body is like organ. Yeah. <laughs> your soul. I know. Yeah. Do you all have his CDs? Yeah, I have. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> "Swinging Gently" is my driving CD. <laughs> When I'm frustrated in the car and waiting for people and, and even my little grandson now, mm. I put it in and he's in the back seat. Yeah. And he's just he's just, you know, clapping along and, and humming and singing and we love your C D. Oh that's good. Yes. Thank you. And an itsy bitsy spider. Oh the itsy bitsy spider. Oh that's on another C D. Yeah. Go ahead. song first. Pick the sound first. Go through and find a sound and a rhythm. Just start with the rhythms because they'll find, with one touch, they'll find the sounds for you. Mm -hmm. And just pick them. And you won't like them all. 
sometimes those Jap especially country, those Japanese guys that, you know, pick the, the songs that go with country. But about sixty percent of them are amazing sounds. And and just play with them and see what happens. Tweak them, move up and down an octave, because sometimes they don't sound good here, but they sound better up an octave higher. Okay? All right, and then we'll meet again in a couple weeks. You'll hear from us, and we'll let you know. We'll send you a map. And um, I think still going to continue to have some fun together. And, uh, yeah, you can shut that off for a minute.